after about two and a half hours, we finally made it safe to our Airbnb, which was called the Cow Shed, and it was the cutest place we've ever stayed at. Everything in that shed was around the theme Highland Cattle. They were everywhere. It had a small fireplace and I built a fire in there that made it like really, really nice and cozy and really warm because it's like one room, it's tiny and there's a fireplace in there. So it just got warm like within five minutes. Everything at the Airbnb was basically themed fluffy cow, which was what we called them or what they're actually called Highland cattle. So you had a cow door stopper. You had a pillow which had Highland cattle on them. A little Highland cattle face made out of sticks. It was super cute. We had so much stuff in there. We had a huge bed, which was way bigger than my bed in Edinburgh. Like, way bigger. The only tiny thing was that there was no water in the cow shed itself. So the bathroom was outside and the sink was outside. Well, not really outside, but you had to go outside and turn to another part of um, that building, that cow shed. So you had to go into the cold every once in a while. But that was fine, because in the cow shed itself, it was so warm, you just had to get outside sometimes. It's too warm. Hi. So we're going to open all the doors and let it get cold. First, I'm going to... And turn off all the lights. Yay! On the first night, we wanted to cook something in the oven. And it kind of developed a lot of smoke, which we didn't know. So we opened it up and like two seconds after that, the fire alarm started to beep very loudly. We managed to turn it off and we were like texting our host like, oh my God, we're so sorry if that was so loud. We didn't mean to wake you. And they were like, yeah, we didn't hear that. We opened all the windows <laughs> and aired the place out. And I think this happened like two or three or four times in the night. So, oops, I guess. Mm, no stars. No stars. Sadly. Hi. <laughs> As you can see, there's <laughs> the water. <laughs> we, can we can have, we have an exceptional view here. As you can see. Since we got to the Airbnb at night, we didn't really see anything surrounding it. We had no idea where we were. We saw like some rocks while driving there and then some other animals and grass, but we didn't know where we were. So the next morning was actually even more amazing because of that, because we woke up to the most amazing ocean view. Our plan that day was to visit three places. The first one was Loch na Geimlich. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Um, the second one was Kailasku Bridge, which is on the NC500. And our last stop um, would be Stir Lighthouse. So our first destination was the waterfall, which was flowing down from Loch na Geimlich. And we got there and of course the weather was... It's raining. Again. It's sad. It's Scotland. We gotta wait. Then yeah. we'll go out. Because we don't want to get sick or something. Yeah. So. That's how it is. How close is this? I don't know. We'll never know. It will always be a secret. <laughs> <laughs>
We drove along the North Coast 500 to get there, which is a beautiful road. I mean, like, probably one of the most beautiful roads I've ever driven on. Our first stop at the waterfall was pretty cool. We had to hike there and the entire place was muddy though because it had rained. And I was scared all the time because I kind of had like a little, let's call it trauma from the Isle of Skye with me standing in the mud. We made the mistake to go on top of the waterfall, well not on top of the waterfall, but hike to the top of the waterfall where it's flowing down from the lake. and. I was, to be honest, at first a bit disappointed. The pictures we've seen were like from higher up or from drones, where you could really see the whole loch and um, the waterfall going down from it. And at the waterfall, it was just like, okay, waterfall, okay, lake, okay. Yeah, it was fine. But we did have the opportunity to fly the drone because it was not raining at the time, which is seldom in Scotland, of course. And so yeah, we had like the view from the drone, we could look at the phone and yeah, Max took some pictures with the drone and some videos. So those were cool, but it was still a bit underwhelming just standing there looking at that waterfall. We decided to go back to the car and drive further along the North Coast 500. At some point we got to a parking lot where you could actually walk through the gorge and see the waterfall from the bottom. And I really wanted to do it, but Anna stayed in the car. So I don't know what she did all the time. <laughs> it's like, I don't even know why you're doing such a mystery out of that. She's like, well, I don't know what she was doing. She could have done anything. She could have stayed in the car and just sat there staring into the abyss. I was just sitting in the car staring into the abyss. I don't know what I did there. I was just sitting there waiting for a long time because it took a really freaking long time. I don't know what he was doing there. He was just, I thought like, okay, he's gonna be back in like 15 minutes. No, it was like half an hour, longer than half an hour, I think. And it was pretty cool to see it from the bottom because it was this tight gorge with the stones on both sides and you had this waterfall coming from the top. And it was definitely one of the bigger waterfalls I've seen in my life. And I think it was really worth it. Anna did have to wait a while until I got back, but I honestly don't care because I saw something cool and she didn't. <laughs> Thank you. I love you too. Appreciate this very much. Our next stop was Kalesco Bridge, which is on the NC500. <sighs> I didn't know what to expect, but it was kind of bigger than I thought. It was really cool, like the architecture of it was also really, really cool. We stopped at a parking lot, which is right next to the bridge, to go out and explore the area. After having walked around for a while and trying to take some cool photos, I decided to actually go up the hill and something really, really cool happened there. Suddenly he screams. And I don't know what's going on. I, I thought he was like falling, dying. I don't know, something happened. And suddenly he's shushing me. And I was just still standing down there, like trying to climb up that hill. And he's like, shh, shh, shh. what the heck is going on? There are deer. When I got up to the hill, I was standing maybe 10 meters away from wild deer. And not just like one deer, there were like tens of them. like. I don't know, maybe 20. And I had never seen wild deer in my life before this close. I was shocked and paralyzed at the same time. I even, I screamed out a little bit because I was so excited and I didn't know what to do. And all I was like thinking in that moment was to, okay, you have to grab your camera, you have to grab your camera, you have to grab your camera. And I finally did get the camera and could take some pictures. And I really loved them. I mean, these are the pictures that you're probably the most proud of if you ever take them because these are like single moments that you can't recapture again ever. So I had tried to climb up there and the thing was because he screamed, they saw us 
and they kind of ran away. The deer were just running away when she got up to the top of the hill. So sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Max. And after taking the pictures of the bridge, we tried to <laughs> chase the deer for a bit to take some more pictures. So because we were taking pictures of the deer and <laughs> chasing them, uh, we kind of forgot about the time and the fact that we still wanted to see a lighthouse at sunset. We are chasing the sunlight. It's... That thing is so sweet. Okay, okay. Come no. ah, This is really hard because Max is driving like a maniac. No, I'm not. Yes, he is. Now it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 